let's say that I have some things that I need to do like walk the dog and wash the dishes. And once each of the tasks is done, I want to be able to mark it as completed. Now one way to achieve this in Solidity is by doing the following. We store each task in an array of strings and then we create a mapping from the index of the array to a boolean value that we mark as completed when the task is done. So for example, the two tasks above will look like this. Here we're storing the two tasks, walk the dog and wash the dishes into the array of strings. And since the first task is done, we mark it as true. And the second task is not yet finished, so it is still false. However, this is not the most intuitive way of storing our data. The good news is that Solidity supports a user-defined data type called structs, which will allow us to store our data more or less like this. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a struct and how to get values from a struct and then how to update it. You can declare a struct by starting with the keyword struct followed by the name of the struct. Here we're going to call the struct to do. Inside this struct, we need to store two fields, a string of text and a boolean value representing completed. So what we did here was we defined a data type that's going to store a string value in an attribute called text and store a boolean value in an attribute called completed. So this is how you define your own custom data type using a struct. Next, let's go over how to initialize a struct and then store it in our contract storage. I want to store a list of to-dos in this contract. So let's create an array of to-do and then call it to-dos. And the way you would do it is like this. You first declare the type of the array. In this case, it will be to-do and then followed by brackets. So this would tell that we're creating an array of to-dos. And then it's going to be a public state variable, so we're going to put the public keyword, followed by the name of this public state variable, which we say we're going to call it to-dos. Notice here that we just declared an array of to-do, where the to-do data type is what we defined here, and it's not any built-in data type. We're going to need a function that will create a new to-do and then append it into this array. I'm going to call this function create and it's going to take in a string of text and inside the function we need to initialize a new to-do and then push it into the array. Now there are three ways to initialize a struct. The first way is to call it like a function. So it will be like this. And we're going to push this newly created to do into an array. So here we initialize the new to do where the first argument corresponds to the first element in the definition of the struct and the second value corresponds to the second element in the definition of the struct. After the to-do is initialized, we immediately push it into the array of to-dos. Another way to initialize a struct is like this. Unlike the first way where the order of the argument is important, in this case the order of argument is not important. So you could switch around the argument and this to do will still be valid. So here I switched around the order of text and completed, but this to do will still initialize. Now when your struct contains like five or more parameters, then this way of initializing a struct is more readable than the first way of doing it. The third way of creating a struct is to initialize a variable of the type of the struct and then update the attributes. So for example, we can create a variable of type to do 
like this and then update the attributes in this case we didn't have to explicitly set the completed flag to false this is because solidity sets it to its default values so this is a useful way to initialize a struct when your struct contains many attributes or when it contains complex data and you just want solidity to set it to its default values so these are three ways to initialize a struct positional key value mapping and then declare it and then update it now that we have a function to create to do's and then store it in this array next let's create a function to get the to do's out of this array we'll name this function get and it's going to take in the index of the array and it's going to return the to do now in other programming languages you can return a struct like this however in solidity 0.5 this is not a valid feature so instead we'll need to explicitly declare the types to return we're going to return the string stored in our to-do struct and then also the boolean value that represents whether the to-do is completed or not next we need to get the to-do stored in this array at this index so we're going to declare a variable that references the to-do that is stored at this index and the way you do it is you declare the type of the data which is to do since it's going to be a variable that's stored in storage we're going to declare as storage and then the name of the variable we'll call it to do and this is going to equal to do's at the index and we return the two attributes text and completed stored in this to do like this So this illustrates how to get a struct that is stored in a state variable. You first declare the type of the data, in this case it is to do, followed by the keyword storage since the data is stored in a state variable, and then followed by the name of the variable. And to access the attributes that is stored in the struct, you do it like this. Next, let's go over how to update a struct. I want to be able to update the text of the to-do and then mark it as completed. So we're going to create two functions, one to update the text and another function to mark it as completed. We're going to name the first function update. And it's going to take in the index of the array where the to-do is stored, followed by the new text to update. And the way you access a to-do, I already explained it earlier, so I'm just going to copy and paste the code here. And to update the to-do, you do it like this. So here we get the to-do and then update the text attribute to our new text value that was passed in from our function. The code to update the completed attribute is going to be similar to the code here. So we're first going to copy and then paste the code here. I'm going to name this function toggle completed. It's only going to need the index of the array and nothing else. And to update the completed attribute, we'll just reassign it to the opposite of the current completed value. So if the current value of the completed is true, then the updated completed will be false. And if the current value of the completed is false, then the new one will be set to true. Now let's compile it and put our to-dos on the blockchain. First, I'm going to create several to-dos. 
I need to wash the dishes. and walk the dog. We can check that our to-do has been stored into the contract by calling get. Notice that Solidity also created the same exact getter for us. So actually, we didn't need to write this function since Solidity automatically creates getters for us. But it's useful to know how to get values out of a struct, especially when you want to customize which data that you're going to be returning. Next, let's try updating the to-dos. So I'm going to update the second to-do, so the index will be 1, and instead of walking the dog, I'm going to walk the cat. And we can check that our to-do has been updated by calling either get or to do's and it returns walk the cat once i finish walking my cat i'm gonna mark it as completed the index of the to do is one and i hit toggle completed i can check that the to do's been updated by calling get again and now it returns true now i forgot to mention this earlier but notice that the output of the to-dos on the bottom is a little bit different from the ones here. So the output here is saying that the text attribute is walk the cat and the completed attribute is false. Whereas up on top, it's saying that the first return value is walk the cat and the second return value is true. So before we go, I'm going to show you how to return the output as a key value like this. And the way to do it is to name your outputs like this. Let's recompile and redeploy the contract. And now you can see here that it returned the text of walk the cat and a completed equal to false. Being able to return an output as a key value becomes extremely useful when your smart contract interacts with other programming languages. Instead of remembering that the first value represents the text of the to-do and the second value represents whether the to-do is completed or not, you'll get a map where the text is equal to walk the cat and completed is equal to false. So you won't have to remember the order of the outputs. Well, that's all I got for this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.